Hello everyone and welcome to part two in our survival game series. In the last part we worked on creating our island paradise. Now in this episode we're going to start working on our resource meters. So working on our hunger, thirst and health meters so we can survive this island paradise. So let's begin. So we're going to build our UI uh, for our survival things first. So let's go into create a UI folder for us. And in here, we're going to put in the player HUD as a oh, user interface, which will be print. And we call this one player HUD. And part of this we're going to have is going to be our resources. So we're going to make another sub widget that we can use as part of that, which would be our resource uh, display. And we'll set this one up now. So on here, we don't need a canvas panel, but I'm going to leave it in for now. The main thing I want to do is design where things are going to go. Uh, so we need various progress bars of different shapes and, and styles. And I want the progress bars with numbers so we can easily read the levels of each without having to try and discern what the bar is saying. So what I'm going to do is going to do a radial bar. So you can see it changing on a spiral and in the center it will be the number. So for this, we need to make a new material to allow us to do a radial, uh, radial bar. So I'm going to do materials, and inside of here, we'll set up our radial bar material, and open this up. Uh, so we're going to change this first of all to use a user interface material domain, like so. And the way this works is we use the vector to radial. Um, uh, value and what this does it takes a UV coordinate in so in this case we'll just use a texture coordinate and what it'll do is it will spit out different types of radial changes you can do uh, so to demonstrate each one if I change that to multiply you can see what each one does okay and this was the original one okay so this is just a rotation uh, this we'll put in for the other ones as well Okay, there we go. So these two look very different. Obviously, this is like more of a gradient and distance. So the more further away it is uh, than the point, which is zero, zero, top left, uh, the brighter it will be. Uh, whereas here is actually a, a radial one, a circle one. So the angle is going to output the number. Now, to make this a bit clearer and to make it actually useful for radial, we're going to take the texture coordinate and subtract uh, 0.5 from it. This will shift the UVs along so that now the point that we are doing the radial from is no longer the top left, but rather in the middle. So let's just refresh these so you can see the difference that these each make. Okay. Now for us, for a radial, we only need one. We're going to need this one, the vector converted to angle. And the way we're using this is because in a radial circle here, it starts at one and goes all the way around to zero, which is very useful for a progress bar. So this is the one we're going to be using. We'll get rid of the other two. And we'll be using that in conjunction with the sphere mask to mask out what circles that we need to appear. So let's do a sphere mask. Uh, the A for this would be the texture coordinates, because that's the space that you're doing the sphere mask in. B will be the coordinate of the circle, which will be 0.5 and 0.5 inside of that space. So we'll put in a two vector, shortcut of which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 um, is a two and left click. And the values we're going to put in here are 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And in here we just assign the radius. So we're going to put that as 0 0.5 again. And the reason why it's 0 0.5 is because the texture coordinate goes between zero and one. So 0 0.5 is half of it, which is what the radius would be. So if I expand that open, you should see the circle shape. So now if I were to multiply this by this value here, what you're going to get is a circular version of our vector radial. Okay. And what I'm going to do further to that is I'm going to subtract a middle part for the ring. So you've got like a nice ring shape to the bar. So I'm going to take this sphere mask again and put that in there. And I'm going to make this radius here smaller. So I put in 0 
and subtract it from the top one. And what we're left with is a ring shape, which then I can plug into here again. And we've now got a radial bar set up for us to use. Very neat. So what I'm going to use for this is I'm going to multiply this by a color. Um, so we'll do white. And do multiply by this to get the final color of a white progress bar. Okay, I'm going to hit apply and we're done there. Now, well, actually, not done. Sorry, we also need the opacity in here too. Otherwise, it's just going to get a black middle bit and a black outside bit. So let's adjust that a little bit. So let's change this over from opaque to uh, masked. And the mask is going to be this same ring circle. Okay. Um, I don't know, no, sorry. The mask would be this circle here, the subtraction here. Apologies. Okay. So that's now masked out that circular shape ready for our UI. Okay, so the way it works is the progress bar is you need to pass through into it a value and that value will then cut off part of this. Now this will work by using this multiply here and checking it against another value. So we're doing if to do the comparison and B would be the other value. And that's going to be a parameter that we're going to use in our code. So hold down S and left click to edit and this will be percent. And we're going to drag that into B there. And to test this out, I'm just put a default value to 0.5. So it makes it a bit clearer. Okay, so if on this color wheel here, if the value of whiteness is of over 0.5, we want it to show this value, okay? Which we're going to put in as, uh, we'll put in as uh, this value. If it is less than, We'll make it equal to zero. So put in a zero key in there and then put that into the opacity mask. And what we'll see is it will cut off part of the shape here. Now for the actual color of this thing here, we don't want it to multiply by this, otherwise we've got a gradient. Instead, we're going to multiply it by this. Actually, don't need to multiply by anything, we'll just leave it like that. That'd be okay. Um, and we've got a simple color system set up. And this percent here, we can change this to anything you can see what it does. If I change 0 0.75, it gets around that far. One is empty, 0.25, it's that way, 0.35, and so on and so forth. Okay. And at zero, it's a full circle. So it will generate this on a percentage like so. Now, because we are working with our resources here at uh, this being a full bar, we want the percent here to be the opposite so we want to do one minus this so do one minus and put that in there so if percent is equal to zero it'll turn into nothing but if percent is equal to one it'll be a full bar okay um and that's what we can do for this right that's all good save that and close that so now i'm going to build out the individual ui elements for this so for this we're going to have a border and in this border, we're going to just set up and use our material we just made in the brush settings. So go into here and search for radial, and I'll see my radial bar, and there it is. And we can set up the size of this to be more accurate to what we want. So size X, size Y, I'll change that to 100 by 100, hmm, maybe a bit more. Let's say 128 by 128. We can always adjust this later on as well. It's not a big deal, but I'll try one more at 150, 150. There we go. Okay, so there's my progress bar for one thing. Now, also, as part of this, I want to have um, the number appearing inside the circle here uh, and an icon as well showing what thing it is, is maybe, uh, but definitely a number. So inside that border there, we're going to add in some text and drop that into the border. And this text block is going to be centered into the block and be centrally, centrally justified. So if this was set to 100, it would look like this. Okay. 
Now, the border itself will want to change the tint of this to match whatever resource we're looking at here. So if we're looking at, say, food or health or mana or whatever, you, you're changing the color to match it. And because we made it white, if we change the content of color and opacity to anything we want here, it will affect this. Sorry, not that, the tint. Sorry, the tint. If we change the tint to anything, it will affect it properly. So let's say this is stamina, okay? Um, well, actually, let's no, say it's thirst, okay? So thirst would be water. So we'll do like a water sort of color. Okay, and that is going to be thirst in this meter. And we can label it as such by naming the border thirsty water. Okay, and we then want to do another one of these. So I'm going to just duplicate this and this one will be set to be called hunger uh, food. And this one we're going to place near here we'll place and change the tint of this to be more green so and add another one for health uh, oh. and we'll change that one to be a red to a color okay so there are our three resources now each one of those three it can be anchored to the bottom uh, left here so let's go to anchors and uh, put that to bottom left so each one now has been set up correctly bottom left there and it's just a matter of just adjusting them to wherever you want it to be uh, we'll go to about there and there are our survival meters compile and save that and I'm going to go into my first person characters HUD which is back here and play a HUD and we're going to search for our resource meters widget and add that to our canvas panel there it is and we're going to take it to fill the whole screen hold down control and shift at the same time and click on this fill screen button and it'll fill it up correctly for you and there we have it we've got uh, health thirst and hunger and when we go into water we'll have another bar showcasing our uh, o2 our oxygen so let's now hook these up to some variables that are on our player character so let's go to the first person player character new variable and do health and these are all going to be floats that range between zero and one so um you can leave them as health as uh float definitely by max health or anything like that so we've got health um hunger and then we've got thirst. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is on the event dispatchers, create an event dispatcher, and we're going to call it uh, spent resource. And when we spend a resource, we're going to report back our health, hunger, and thirst. So we can update UI and do other checks and things in the world. So the inputs here, we're going to add three floats one for health one for hunger and one for thirst hit compile and save this and on the event graph for this we're going to make these uh this be called every so often on a timer so we're going to go into our uh, begin play event and we're going to start a timer set timer by function name and the object can be self and the function name will be tick hunger and the time here will be the hunger tick timer so you may promote that to a variable here and call it hunger tick time uh, which hunger tick we'll call it and leave it like so and looping and we'll do the same thing again Copy, paste. This time, we're going to be using thirst. So, put it to verbal thirst tick. And we're going to do tick thirst. Okay, so all that's left to do is make these functions that actually will tick away our hunger and thirst. So, let's go make a new function and do tick hunger. And on here, we're going to take the hunger value. 
And we're going to take one away from it. Well, not one. We're going to take 0.1 from it. And we'll then set that back to hunger. And then call our event dispatcher, spent resources. And we'll do call. And we're going to plug in the hunger value. And what's important here is that we plug in also the health and thirst values so that on the other side of things, when we're reading from this, we're not going to get zero where we want it here. Oh, that's what I want. Health. And thirst. Okay. And we'll do the same for tick thirst as well. And it pretty much is exactly the same. So take thirst here, get, subtract, and we'll do 0.1. And set that back to thirst. And then we'll do the call spent resources. Hunger goes in there, health goes in there. Okay, so there are our ticking things done. Uh, we just need to set up the time they take on the tick variables we made. So hunger tick will say every five seconds we'll tick that down. This is only for testing purposes. We'll obviously change this to be a longer later on. And then thirst will do every three seconds it will top down. Uh, as long as they've been ticked to loop, you're okay here. Right, so next thing we do is tying our resource display here to our player character's resources. So we're going to go to the graph and on here, I'm gonna to go to the pre-construct, get player character, then cast to our first person character. Now to change our scalar parameter inside each one of these, we do need to get access to them and change and their dynamic material properties. So first of all, we're going to select each one and make it editable by going to its variable. Like so. And then on the graph here, on the pre-construct, we're going to do the setup for these three bars. Uh, hold on, let's just first of all promote this to a variable. And then we can drag out each one of these. So let's start with, with health. Get this health here. And we'll do dynamic material. And we're going to promote that to a variable. And that'll be health mat. And we'll do the same for the other ones as well. So we're going to do hunger. Get dynamic material. Hunger. Met and then finally thirst. And then promote that to a rebel. Okay. At the end of this we're gonna take our first person character reference and we're gonna do a bind event to spent resources. And we're going to bind this to a create event, which we'll then choose from the drop down, create a matching function or event. We're going to choose function and we'll make this update our various bars. So we've got our materials, health, hunger, uh, and, and thirst. Let's just fix our spelling error and drag each one of these out. So health will come out first, do this, and we'll do set scalar parameter value. The value is going to be percent. So the parameter name is going to be percent and the value will come from health. And we'll do that for each one. So we just do hunger, set scalar parameter value. And we'll search for hunger. And that'll be set to percent. And we're going to do thirsty. Set scale. Uh, thirsty. Water. Oh, wrong one. Thirst map. 
That's better. So yeah, set that to percent. And the value will become our first value. And there you have it. So what we're going to do is uh, make dynamic materials out of these by creating material instances. Um, so we're going to go to a UI materials folder and create a material instance of our radial blur and use this one for our various um, resources. So go in there, radial blur inst. That's the only thing you have to change, you don't have to do anything else. So, uh, inst and then to inst. Okay, so there's our HUD for our player character. Uh, we definitely need to add it to our HUD class in our game. So let's go to our UI folder, uh, not UI folder, our uh, first person BP folder, blueprints, and you'll see first person HUD. I open this up and I'm going to go and do begin play and create our HUD widget. Create widget and choose our um, player HUD. And then we're going to provide that to a variable and add to viewport. Okay, let's see this in action. Okay, so uh, slight issue there, obviously. Um, so let's take a look at what's gone wrong there. So we go back to the resource display into the graph and looking at making dynamic materials um spent resources that's coming through here and setting these all up mm -hmm. uh, if we go to our player character and look at what we're sending over to this so tick hunger and tick hunger minus let's set back to hunger that should be coming through just fine Let's make sure, ah, there you go. That's why these are all set to zero to start off with. Let's start this off at one. One and one. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, and there's our progress bars dipping away as we play the game. And the last thing we're going to do is make it so those numbers change as well. So let's go in and do that on our resource display here. Each one of these numbers will make a variable. So this is the first value. And it's going to be hunger value. Tick is variable. And this is going to be health value. Is variable on the graph when we do the display auto gen func the, the scalar parameter stuff. We're going to take the higher uh, also on health so health value get and do set value uh, set not set value set text and this is going to be the number but because we want it as a a whole number and that's a, like a uh, out of a hundred base hundred. We can take the health value here and I'm going to multiply this by 100 and then truncate it to an integer. We're going to plug into there. Okay, we're going to do that same thing for all of them. So I take this, this, and this, copy that, move that aside, paste this in. And the hunger, and this would be the hunger value. And last bit, that'd be thirst. And then thirst value to there. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this in action. Hit play again. So we should see the bars deplete as well as the numbers deplete too. So now I've got 90 thirst, 90 hunger. 79 and so forth and so forth. Okay.
And there we have it. And there we have it. We've now got our three main core resources available to us and now ticking away beautifully. In the next episode, we're going to add in our fourth resource, which is oxygen, and detecting when we go underwater to take away oxygen and then to affect our health when it is depleted. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can catch all my episodes early before everyone else. I'll say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.